layer editing, layer merging, color matching and even background removal. Well, those are some of the tasks we're going to practice in today's fun episode celebrating the release of our brand new Easter bundle. Well, as you can see, we have a lot to do, so let's jump into Luminar Neo and start right now. Okay, so moving into Luminar Neo, where we are already in the catalog module and we are looking at our sample files. What we're gonna need? Well, we're gonna need the full scene with the cracked egg, so image just like this. Then we're gonna need an overlay, which we will use to create a depth. And most importantly, we're gonna use this gorgeous capture of the golden retriever puppy and we will place him inside of the egg. Now, the two images with the cracked egg and the overlay, I will give you as a part of the sample files for this episode. So if you wanna follow me along, jump into the description of this video, follow the link and download the sample files now. However, if you want more elements like this, definitely check out our brand new Easter bundle, which is available on our website and it will bring you 630 similar elements like this, including presets, LUTs, skies, overlays, textures and backgrounds. Now, once you have the sample files ready, import them into Luminar Neo and we can start. So what are we gonna do? Well, first thing we need to do, we're gonna select the image with the full scene and we're gonna move it into the edit module. Use E on your keyboard or simply click on edit on the top of your screen and let's move there. Now we have the full scene, but we also need the elements. We need the dog and the overlay. Well, how are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna work with the layers panel. Here we're gonna click on plus sign and as you can see, I have the elements already here. However, for you, you click on load image, then you navigate towards the sample files, select the dog, click on open, select the overlay, click on open. And once you have them ready, let's go ahead and start by adding the overlay. So we're gonna do that. Let's just click on the layer and in a few seconds, it will be added on the image. Now, once we add it, actually, let's go ahead and also add the dog. So we're gonna click on plus sign again and select the puppy. Once the puppy appears, it may be distorted like this. Well, the easiest way to fix this, jump into the layer properties and click on fill. Or fit, actually, that works as well. Either way, they will both fix the distortion. Adjust the size very quickly, but actually for the time being, we don't need to worry about it too much. So let's just place it over the egg, increase the opacity and come back to our layers panel. This is the time when you will understand why we need the second layer or the overlay layer. Well, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take it and we're gonna drag and drop it above the dock. And when we go into layer properties while having the overlay selected and increase the opacity, you will see what it's going to do. It creates the overlay over, right? So now it looks like the dock is sitting inside. However, you can see that there is a little issue with these shadows. How to fix this? Well, it's gonna be really easy, but for a distraction, let's just remove the dog for the time being. So simply right click on the layer with the dog and click on hide layer. Now we can zoom in a little closer using command or control plus or the wheel on your mouse. And let's have a look at what we need to fix. Now, I like the shadows here, they work very well, but we need to fix the shadows on this side. So let's start by that. We have the layer with the overlay selected, moving into layer properties, where we can select masking, brush, erase, softness, a little bit lower, I would say somewhere around 10, and a strength we can keep on 10. Now the heavy masking can be done quite quickly, just one click, one brush, then hold shift and click on the other side. This way it will create a line in between and that shadow is gone. Now we can zoom in a little closer and this is where we're just gonna brush over the edge of the egg here. So I'm thinking somewhere around here. And once we do that, that shadow will disappear. Zooming back up, you can use Command or Control Zero to fit in a screen and we need to fix the other side exactly the same way. So let's just zoom in a little closer. One click on one side, hold the shift on your keyboard Another click, that's the long line gone. And zooming into this area, again, let's just brush gently over here. And just like that, that shadow is fixed. So we have fixed our shadows and we have the overlay layer ready. 
So it's time to come back to our dog. Now let's unhide it. So right click on a layer with the puppy and select show layer. Now for the time being, we're going to right click on the layer with the overlay and hide it so we can see the dog. It looks so cute. Actually, a little secret. I'm a massive fan of golden retrievers and I hope to have one one day. So what we need to do? Well, we're going to select the layer with the puppy and we're going to move into layer properties because we need to remove the background. Now to do this, it's really simple. We're going to select masking and in a masking, we're going to navigate into the background removal AI. Select that. That will now scan the image and prepare the mask for us. Once the mask is ready, you can click on remove. And within a few seconds, we have a really nice cutout of the puppy. If you think that it needs some fixing, you can zoom in and double check. You can always open the refinement brush and just brush around. One way to do it is to use the transition and just recalculate some part of the puppy. But for me, this is actually quite nice selection. So I don't worry about it. I just click on this little arrow to come back and we have the puppy ready. Now we're going to look at the scene. So first of all, looking at it, you can see that the light is coming from this direction. You can see that there is a light on the X here and it's a darker on the other side where on the puppy, you can see most of the light is coming from here and it's, there is a little bit of darker area here. So we need to flip the puppy. Now, how to do that? Well, it's very simple. Select it again, back to layer properties this time into properties and there is an option to very easily flip horizontally. So when you click on that, it just flipped the puppy. Now, since we already here, we can also adjust the size. So thinking that he's sitting inside of the shell somewhere around here, it can be a little bit smaller or bigger. It's up to you. We can adjust it to, let's say somewhere around here, rotate it a little bit, just a tiny bit. And I think that looks quite good. I think we're going to place him or her, <laughs> the puppy in the center, I think somewhere around here. And to me, that looks quite good. Now, once we're done with that, what we can do, we can bring back our overlay layer. So back to our layers panel, right click on the layer with the overlay and select show layer. So the puppy is inside. Now it looks good, right? Not too bad. Of course, it's not perfect yet, but I think it's starting to look good. What are we going to do now? Well, we're going to color match the puppy with the rest of the image. Now, in past, I was teaching a technique using a curves, but actually now we have much easier technique and that's to use the color transfer tool. What it does, it basically borrows the color and luminosity from the image or from the test image and apply it to your photo or for us to the dog. Well, let me show you. It sounds complicated, but it's very easy. We need to make sure that we have the layer with the puppy selected. We can close the layer properties and we need to navigate into the creative section. In a creative section, the second tool is the color transfer. So let's click on it and open it. Now, what we need to do first, we need to select the reference image. To do that, we're going to click on the nice library button. And here we can choose one of the, let's say, sample files here. But we are looking for our image. So click on plus sign. Again, navigate towards the sample files and select the image with the full scene. Once you have it ready, just click on open. It will take a few seconds or maybe more than a few seconds. And it will apply the colors as well as the luminosity. But it's not great, right? It's a little bit over the top. It looks a bit too strong. Well, we can adjust this very easily. First with the amount slider. That is up to you if you want to bring it down a little bit. But what I prefer is to leave it on the 60, which is the default, and then move into color intensity and luminosity intensity. So first with the color intensity, it's way too green. So we're going to bring it down until we like the result. So I think to start with, somewhere around 50. And more importantly, we need to adjust the luminosity. It's really not working. He's looking way too dark and it doesn't match the image. So just take it and bring it down until you like what it does. Now we don't want it as bright. So we're going to apply a little bit of the darkening. I would say somewhere around 20 or 25. I leave it up to you. I will go with 20. Now back to color intensity. Now without anything, it's not great. So just keep an eye on it. And I think Probably, what, what do you think? Around 40, maybe 45, mm, between, between 40 and 45. So let's go for 40. Now, after this, again, you can adjust the amount. So without anything and with the application. So yeah, probably the 60 looks good. 
Okay, so now we have the dog color matched and luminosity matched, and it's time to play around with the shadows, just to add a little bit more depth and make it a little bit more realistic. So looking at the image, few things. First, as he's sitting inside, there should be some shadow coming on him from bottom up. So we're going to do that very easily using gradient and a little bit of develop tool. Equally, the actual behind should have a little bit of shadow coming from here and here, just because he's basically blocking the light and there should be some shadow there. So let's start with the doggo. We already have it selected. So the layer with the dog selected, back up to the essentials tools, open the develop tool and start by bringing the exposure down. Now, what you're trying to match is the exposure of the shadow here. So I already done it, but Let's say you're starting here. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. Keep an eye on the shadow around and bring it down until it's pretty much similar, which I think is around, yeah, let's say minus 0.70 too much, maybe minus 0.5 or 50. With that done, it doesn't look great because it darkens the entire dog. But as I mentioned, what we're going to do, we can go into masking and, for example, use the linear gradient. With that, we can now drag the gradient up and looking at it, remember, this is a 100% of the mask, this is a 50% of the mask, and this is a 0% of the mask. So with a nice gradient, it will add the darkening to the dog. Now this is a little bit too high and this is a little bit too low. So I am thinking somewhere around here. Once happy, you can come back to adjustments or you can use the little arrow to return. Let's have a look at it before and after, and it looks better. If you think that it needs to be a little bit darker, we can still bring the darkening down. So let's do that actually. I think maybe just somewhere around, maybe minus one. With that, we can still fix it a little bit if we want to by going back to masking, selecting brush, and this time we're actually gonna go to erase, adjust the strength to, let's say 30, and we can open the mask if we want to, just by hitting the backslash key or going back with the brush, going into mask action and selecting show. After this, back to brush, we have everything selected. We can make the brush a little bigger. And if we want, we can just make it a little bit more interesting. Now you can hide the mask if you want to. Adjust the size and just brush in and make some of these areas brighter. But I think that this looks quite good. Let's have a look again before and after. Perfect. So we have added a little bit of depth from the bottom up on the dog. Now I was talking about, I was talking about shadow behind. Now, before we're going to do that, just a quick thing. Let's go back to paint. Let's increase the strength. And I'm just thinking if we're going to add a shadow behind the dog, let's also add a little bit of shadow around the silhouette. So we're using the same uh, develop tool, which we have already adjusted. Maybe with the strength, let's go for 60. And we basically just going to brush on the edge of the dock. So something like this here and similar on the other side here. There you go. Perfect. So that looks much better. Once we're done with this, we can close the develop tool and we're going to return to our base layer. This is where everything is happening. But in front of the base layer, remember, we now have the dog and also the overlay. So with the base layer selected, back into develop tool, exposure down quite a lot. I would say probably around minus one again. Now everything is darkening. It doesn't look great, but don't worry because we're going to fix that again with masking and brush. Make sure you're on pain strength around 30. And now very quickly, we're just going to make one click. So it will disappear everywhere other than the area where we're going to brush. So we are adding a shadow behind the dog. So let's do that. And again, on the other side, just brush over and add a little bit of darker areas behind the dock. Something like that. Behind here, it looks great because it's already darker. On the other side, we just need to be yeah, a little bit more patient. If we want to increase the size and then switch to erase just to make, big, make it a little bit more soft, we can definitely do that and end up with something like this. Let's have a look. Before and after. I know it looks quite subtle, but it's really important. Now looking at it, we have added a little bit too much shadow here. It's going to go behind to the background. So we can very quickly fix that while we are still on erase and just brush over this area to 
remove it. Cool, this looks really, really nice. So back to it, close the develop tool and let's quickly, oh, we can't see the before and after. Well, we will in a moment. Anyway, where are we with our edit? So we have brought our main layer. After that, we have brought our elements. We have adjusted the shadow, adjusted the size of the dog, color match the dog with the rest of the image and also fix the shadows just to make it a little bit more believable. Now, at this point, we are done with the layer editing and it's time to merge everything together and continue with more global adjustments to make it look a little bit better. Well, in past, you would have to export the image in the highest possible quality and bring it in. But I am really glad and happy to say that we don't have to do that anymore because we can now jump into layers panel use command or control on our keyboard and select the layers we want to merge. And once done with that, we can right click on them and simply select merge layers. Now the application will merge the layers together and place the new layer with all the layers merged together on the top, just like that. So now when I apply any editing to it, it will be applied to the entire image. So uh, what are we gonna do? Well, to mix and blend everything together, we're just gonna apply a few different effects. First one, we can jump again into our editing toolbar, and this time we're gonna go into the Enhance AI. In Enhance AI, it's quite a nice idea to use the Accent AI because it basically just matches everything nicely together. Now, we don't wanna go crazy, it's just not nice, but I think just a touch around 20 will look quite nice. After this, we're going to move into the creative section where we're going to be looking at different tools. First one is the mood tool. So we're going to apply a little LUT or color lookup table to basically blend everything together. And one that works really well on this type of image is hiding inside of the library, cinematic toning and the long beach. Look at that. If I show you the before and after, you will not believe it. And actually on this image, we can even increase it to let's say around maybe 50 too much, maybe 40. And that really works super well again, before and after. After this few more things we can do. Well, let's jump into the mystical tool and increase that. Just add a little bit of glow. After that, we can also add a little bit of film grain to make it more cinematic. So open the tool and add around 10. And to really finish it off, I always like to finish the edit with a little vignette. So into the Essentials Tools, Vignette Tool, and bring the amount down until you get what you like. Now, what we can do, we can click on Choose Subject and actually move it a little bit on the side to follow the same direction of the light. So somewhere around here. And into the Advanced Setting and add a little bit of extra glow in that area. Um, let's have a look. Somewhere around here. Once we're done with Vignette Tool, we can close it and we can have a quick look uh, at the work we have done since the merging. So before, actually, if we if we now go into Edits and click on Discard Edits, you will see the before. And when we click on the Vignette again, you will see the after. It looks much better, right? Anyway, so this is the way, <laughs> this is the way, or this is the technique on working with layers having a little bit of fun adding your own pet into an element like this and also having fun with our Easter bundle, which one more time is available on our website, cleverphotographer.com. It is on offer for $39 until the Easter. And if you're interested in similar edits and want to have a fun with your spring and Easter photography, then check it out. It includes over 630 brand new Easter and spring elements. We have never shared them before. And if you get it, you will get amazing presets, LUTs, skies, textures, backgrounds, and overlays like this. By the way, if you want to continue learning on how to do similar techniques like this, or you want to get back to basics, we do have a video tutorial for every single tool in the application available for free on our YouTube channel. So don't stop right now and continue learning by heading to our YouTube channel, cleverphotographer.com and continue enhancing your editing skills right now.